Hi everyone and welcome to Deck the Halls DIY Studios tutorial and unboxing of our holiday gift box. My name is Maria Hall and I'm the owner of Deck the Halls DIY Studio. If you're new to us, welcome. We're so happy that you are here. And if you're a returning DIYer, thanks for coming back and joining me in the unboxing. Um, this holiday gift box was gifted to you by someone who thought of you this year and wanted you to have the gift of creativity. And I am so excited to unbox it with you today. Um, we're gonna go through the contents of the box that you received in the mail or maybe under the tree and all of the goodies that come with it. So join me as we unbox what's in your holiday gift box and I will walk you through the tutorial on how to DIY those projects inside. All right, let's take a look at what's inside this holiday gift box. When your gift box arrives, you will see the following contents. You have a nice name ornament or keepsake. So your name was included here and we painted that up for your gift tag. Um, within that spot, you will have a few different cards. So you will have your Merry Christmas card, which will tell you who your box is from, your Deck the Halls gift box, um, all of the contents. So we'll be going through that. This gift box project kit. So what's included with your DIY kits. And then this is the code that you use to maybe the QR code to find it on your phone, um, our instructional video, or you just searched on YouTube. And then on the back, it talks about where we are located and where you can visit our page and leave us some feedback. Um, and then this is about us. So if you're new to us, you can meet um, the owners, which is myself and my husband. We're husband and wife owners of Deck the Halls DIY Studio, and we're excited to have you here. So there's your cards. Um, so let's go through, I'll go through the contents you will receive um, in your box. So here's your ornament, gift tag, keepsake. You'll have some Tessie's popcorn to enjoy while you DIY. A Deck the Halls DIY Studio can koozie um, to keep your beverage cold. Chocolate because everyone needs a little sweet treat when they're crafting. Our Deck the Halls DIY Studio pen so you can always remember back to your box um, and your sign when you are not near it. You will get um, a, this heart, a token heart, which you are going to paint and one word will be put on there. One word was selected by the person that gifted the box to you, so this box has hope. So we're going to paint the heart and then we will put hope on there. Your 10 by 10 framed sign. So this has been prepared for you, okay? And underneath that, we had to keep the stencil flat. So underneath, you will find your stencil that will be put in to your frame when we paint. So that is your scene that was also selected to, for you by the person gifting. We also included the paint for your heart and the paint for your frame. So you should have three colors of paint that were selected um, and then three sponges, a yellow sponge, a whole white sponge and a half sponge and we'll go through which ones you'll use on which spots um, and that is the contents of your holiday holiday gift box and we are excited you are here so let's dive in to our creative DIY project okay hi everyone let's get started on your DIY projects that are in your holiday gift box um, for this sign, your sign is a quote or customization or a positive affirmation that was selected from the person that gifted you the box. I'm going to use this um, as one of, as the demo today for our instructions. Before I start with this sign, I want us to start with our token heart. So grab your token heart um, and you'll need your yellowish sponge and you'll dip it in the teal paint and you will simply paint. Okay, so you'll just take your sponge, 
and you will paint. Now you'll notice that my heart has a different color on the other side, um, and that's because I'm just repainting one that we had here to show you how to do it. So you don't need a lot of paint at all. You've got way more paint than you need. Um, so if you want to add this teal color to your sign, that would be awesome. You can totally do that as well. So we're going to let this dry and I'm gonna let that sponge sit. Um, and we're going to now start in on our framed sign here. Okay, so to work with this, the stencil, you'll wanna use a flat surface. One thing I'll let you know is that we did paint this and then sand it. So this is prepared for you. You do not need to do anything to this um, ahead of time. You are ready to use your stencil, so take your stencil, you'll flatten it out. Um, you'll flip it over and you're going to notice that there will be three layers to your stencil. There will be the clear transfer tape, there will be the blue, which will be your stencil, and then there's the white backer. Your first task is to pull the white backer from the blue and the clear. So the blue and the clear are staying together and you're pulling back. Now, I like to pull from a corner and pull at an angle and kind of crease as I go. You'll notice here that the E, the inside of the E came up, so you're just gonna wanna push that back down. As you continue to pull across, just be aware of your stencil and the pieces that might be coming up. If pieces come up, again, just push them right back down. Now this is a large um, sticker, essentially. So don't hit it to itself, that will ruin it. Um, keep this white piece, you may want to dab the paint off your sponge. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Now, you'll take your frame sign and put it in front of you, and then you'll take your stencil and hold it. And what you wanna do is make it fit inside where you like it. So if you are a ruler person, have a ruler out. Um, if you eyeball, I just eyeball, then that's good too. But put it where you would like to have it, and then you can drop it down. Once you apply pressure, it is down, okay? So once pressure is applied, the stencil is stuck. Now, if you want to pull it up, I hope I don't get it here. So if you wanna re-pull it up, you can grab an X-Acto knife or a tweezers to pull it back up, to resituate it. I just wanted to show you that. So don't apply pressure. I did not apply pressure. Um, and you'll get it to the spot that you like. Once you apply pressure, I would recommend putting pressure in the middle and then smoothing out to the sides. And you can just use your hand. Now, if you've done DIY before, if you've done stencils, you might have a squeegee or you might have used a credit card. You can certainly do that to push it out, but this has been prepared for you, so it's been sanded well, so just using your hand to smooth it out should be enough. Okay, once you've done that, you're gonna find a corner where you can now peel the transfer tape back. Okay, so you're gonna wanna peel the transfer tape. Same rule applies. If any blue comes up, you need to push it right back down. Okay. So we'll peel it up nice and easy. You'll notice I'm not ripping it off. I'm kind of going with um, where it's kind of leading me to. And then because we just pulled something up, I just encourage you to smooth this out again just to make sure everything is adhered. Now you are ready to paint. So I would encourage you to take your large white sponge, dip it in the paint um, color that you would like to use. I'm going to use black. This is way too much paint. There is a big glob of paint on it. So you're gonna load your sponge and off to the side, you can see that I'm unloading it or I'm taking some off, I'm dabbing it. This is about how much paint you should have. The thickness of tissue paper. Okay, so very thin coat and you're just going to lightly dab and then I reload from where I unloaded 
and you want very thin coat, tissue paper thin coats, once you go forward once, once you do your whole sign, then you can come back and do a second coat of paint if you would like it darker um, or a thicker paint. Again, here's my blob. Unload and then dab. And I'm just gonna leave it look like this. Now it's a really thin coat as you can see. And that's what I want. If you get too much paint on your um, sponge and on your stencil, it you run the risk of bleeding. If you go off of your blue stencil when you're dabbing, grab a tissue paper, grab a, um, or sorry, grab a paper towel, a wet paper towel, or grab a baby wipe. We craft with those all the time in the studios and wipe it off really quick. You should be good to go. Okay, so complete this step, go back, do a second coat, um, and then we will come back together and we'll talk about how we proceed after we've painted. All right, once you have done your one or two coats, um, you are ready to peel your stencil as long as there is not globs of wet paint sitting on your stencil. We get asked a lot at workshops in the studio, how do I know if there's enough paint on it? Well, this is really up to you. This is really personal preference. So um, look at what you have and see if, there, if it's light enough that it's a little bit rustic if you're going for the rustic look. Um, or if you don't want the rustic look, make sure you have a good solid base of paint there so that when you peel it up, um, it is solid letters, okay? Then once you're ready to peel your stencil, you're going to try to find a corner that you can peel up the stencil from. And it is okay if it rips. You'll see that I'm using an X-Acto knife. We use them all the time in the studio. But if you don't have one of those at home, a paper clip would work really well. Uh, tweezers would work well too. So you'll see I'm pulling it up. It's okay if it rips because we are throwing the blue away. Now this part is so much fun because it is fun to see your finished project. Okay, so I like to go back with my X-Acto knife and kind of pick up those smaller pieces. Look at that. Now, the insides of the letters. If your paint is still wet, I would encourage you to leave the inside of your letters until it is dry. Or if you feel experienced, you can do it. You can do it. So I go in, try to be as flat as possible. Um, I want to show you, I did this so that you could see if you gouge that E a little bit, or I did a little bit on the E, I'm just going to take a little bit of paint on my X-Acto knife and I am just going to dab right where I feel like I had a little bit of a gouge. Okay. So look at that. My frame is done. I love it. I cannot wait to see what you create. So share it with us. Again, you have plenty of pl paint provided. So if you want to mix and match your colors, that would be awesome. Make it yours. Okay. So I'm going to put this aside for a moment. Um, we'll go back to our heart. Within your kit, you um, received a piece of sandpaper. Because we painted, now you do need to sand lightly on your heart. Now, if you want to kind of rough up those edges, this would be a good time to do that. You don't have to sand this crazy, but again, this is where you can make it yours. So if you want it more distressed, go ahead and sand a little bit more. If you wanted to add white and go over it a little bit to kind of give it an antique look um, or rustic look, you could do that. If you wanted to add black, you could do that. So um, the word that's going on this heart is hope. And when the hearts sit, they sit this way. So I'm going to put my word on, so it looks a little bit different if I go this way. Just um, think about how you want your heart to sit and which way you want your word to be read. Again, we're gonna peel this stencil because it's smaller. You don't necessarily have to put it on a flat surface and you'll peel it up just like we did with the square and then place it wherever you would like it to be. Let's see if it's gonna sit like this. I'm gonna go right here. Okay, 
Apply it, apply pressure, peel up that transfer tape. I am going to use white for my word. So I'm gonna take my small, small sponge, load, unload, and this you need next to no paint. Okay, very, very light paint. And I actually think one coat is gonna do it for this one. And then you can pull it up. How cute is that, you guys? So this one, very simple to do. I'm gonna pull up my hope. Now, if you're like, well, maybe I could do this word on the other side, you totally could. Just put this one down on the other side um, and take those middle pieces and put them in and then you would be good to go to reuse it. Our stencils aren't normally reusable, um, but when they are this small, you certainly could reuse them as long as you keep all your pieces. So there is your token heart. Now you can display these either together, there's hope for wine, I don't know, um, or you could put them separate. This might be nice on your desk, um, and this might be nice in your home um, or in your room or something. So I hope you enjoyed your holiday gift box. We would love to see your creations and we would love to hear from you when you receive your gift. So please share with us on Deck the Halls DIY Studio, um, Facebook, Instagram, and you can always send us an email. Thanks for joining us tonight, everyone, and we'll see you soon.